Now, this is probably the 17th video you've seen on the subject, but Sony just released a new 24 to 50 f 2.8G lens for full frame cameras. Now, in my honest opinion, this might not have been the hero that we asked for, but I think it might be the hero that we deserve. We'll get into it. of the body design of this lens, there's nothing that's really surprising. It's gonna have that black body design that you're gonna see out of the G and G Master lenses. You're gonna get a manual aperture ring that you can click and declick. And as well as you're gonna get this custom function button, which is gonna be really important later on in this video. Now, in terms of having the G designation, I just think that means they're higher end lenses. I actually don't know the difference too much. But you're also gonna get things like a 67 millimeter filter thread. Obviously, this guy is gonna be made for full frame cameras. And you're gonna get a lot of the same expectations that you would in terms of just handling a lens of this size. In fact, it's actually about the same size as my 16 to 35 f4 lens, which is also a pretty compact lens as far as zoom lenses go. Now we're going to go into pricing a little bit later, but a 24 to 50 millimeter f2.8 does cover a lot of the ranges as another lens, which is actually pretty expensive in the 24 to 70, especially the Mark II, which just came out. Now that's kind of nice because you can cover a lot of that range. And if you don't need the range between 50 and 70 millimeters at full frame, this actually might be a lens you might look at, especially because of its size, its weight, and the fact that it's gonna come really close to a G Master lens. Now, also just the last thing on the focal range is that the fact that you actually have three lenses in one. Let me explain. Now, a couple of years ago, Sony released three lenses. They released a 2.8 24mm, a 2.5 40mm, and as well as a 50mm at the 2.8 as well. Now, if you don't really know math very well, this lens actually covers all of those ranges by only having one lens instead of having three. Also, when you combine the pricing between the two of them, this one is going to be the cheaper option. So if you're somebody that was looking at some of those compact lenses and you don't mind a little bit more size but having all three lenses in one, this actually might be the better buy and the better choice. Now, I'm gonna congratulate myself a little bit. This is actually my first Sony embargo video. I've never been in this realm before, so this is all new to me. But I am gonna preface that all of the testing and functionality is just gonna be things that I find important to myself. There's like 20 videos out that are going to come out for this lens and you can check out those guys for other details. But as someone that shoots a lot of sports, action and fitness, these are all the features about this lens that I'm going to test that are important to me. Also, some things that might be important to yourself. Now, just like other photography lenses, particularly the Sony ones, in terms of the flaring, it's not really going to flare that much. A lot of modern and a lot of clinical lenses don't have a ton of lens flare when putting a light source in front of it. But what also is kind of cool is the fact that you do have a 67 millimeter filter thread. Now, that's not necessarily put glass in front of that glass, but 67 millimeters is exactly where you can use the Moment Anamorphic Adapter. Now, I do have to zoom out about 35 millimeters at the minimum, but technically this works if you want an anamorphic look and you want to get a little bit more flaring out of the lens, something that I think I should try in a later video. Now, as somebody that's more into video production and filmmaking, one thing with zoom lenses is finding out if they're going to be par focal. Now, I don't have an exact test with doing this, but when zooming out at the various focal lengths, it actually did a pretty decent decent job. I wouldn't say it's exactly spot on when it's sharp when you zoom in and out from 24 to 50 millimeters. However, it didn't feel like I lost a lot of focus when I was moving in and out of the range. Now, some people might not care because they're going to have this on autofocus 90% of the time. But when using manual focus lenses that zoom in or zoom out, one of the things that might really annoy you is when you actually lock in your focus. As you zoom in and zoom out, you might lose that focus back and forth on some cheaper lenses, which doesn't seem to be the case, at least in my experience, using the 24 to 50 millimeter lens. Now, a lot of the modern day Sony lenses, the G lenses and the G masters, especially the ones that have come out recently, are lenses that are compatible with something called focus breathing compensation. Now, some of you guys don't have that feature on your camera. And if you do, it is going to crop in a little bit, making it more of like a 26 to like a 54 or 55. However, you are going to be able to get rid of some of that focus breathing that's there. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't have focus breathing compensation on your camera, as you are moving through your focus plane, you are going to see some breathing. It's not exactly the best thing in the world, but it isn't necessarily the 35 millimeter G Master lens, which is notorious for having focus breathing. However, if you have a lot of the modern day cameras, you're going to be able to use breathing compensation, and that's just something that you're not going to have to worry about. Now, today's video is going to be sponsored by Artlist. Now, everybody knows that Artlist is a great resource for getting royalty-free music and sound effects, but it also makes the entire process of filmmaking a lot easier. 
for one, you're gonna be able to get stock footage, not just any old stock footage, but you're gonna get the ability to choose between log formats or even raw formats, depending on the camera it's shot on. That way you could match up the clips to actually match up to your films, just in case you're missing a clip. On top of that, it's gonna make your post-production a lot easier because you're gonna be able to use a variety of different templates and plugins that you can get for Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and DaVinci Resolve as well. Now, if we're gonna go even a step further, Artlist also offers video and editing software, which is actually new to me, but if you're somebody that's not used to some of the other programs or you're just starting out and you wanna keep everything under one roof, you can use some of Artlist's apps that you can download from their website as well. If you don't wanna worry about monthly charges coming out every single month, you could actually bill yourself annually through Artlist, which means that the day you sign up is the only day you're gonna pay outside of the 365 days later, which makes it a little bit easier in terms of managing your finances. But if you guys wanna check out more, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below and one on the screen and a special shout out to Artlist for sponsoring this video but let's get back to talking about the 24 to 50 G lens because there's a lot to go over now this lens is great it has great color it has great sharpness it pretty much performs just like a G lens and honestly some lenses are good enough in my opinion that they should just be called G master lenses however there are two gripes that people might have with this lens now, number one is going to be the fact that it's not a 24 to 70 that's going to be cheaper and then just have the G lens designation. Now, that off the bat is actually kind of an unrealistic expectation. However, there is one thing that I mentioned before that you could use on this lens. Now, we did mention the fact that there is going to be a little side custom button on here. And if you're using something like a full frame camera that has APS-C mode, what you can do is you could actually toggle the APS-C mode on the side of this lens. So whenever you need a little bit more reach, like something that's going to be more 70 millimeters, you could actually press a button at the side and you get a little bit extra reach to match up that 70. Now, I did put beside each other the Super 35 version at 70 millimeters on this lens and a true 24 to 70. And to be honest with the 70 millimeter with the compression that's there, I don't really notice a gigantic difference between the two which means by all technical standpoints, depending on the camera you're gonna use, this actually might kind of be like a 24 to 70, as long as you have a full frame camera and you map that custom button and you're able to keep it at 4K. Now, one thing that I found interesting is that this 24 to 50 f 2.8 lens was very much designed to work with compact cameras like the a7C Mark II. Now, I am gonna show you some of the photography features later on in this video, but I decided to put these two together and actually film some stuff to see how good it is as a filmmaking tool. I'm gonna tell you the God honest truth. Nobody that trains wants to do it every day. You know, push ourselves, strict with our diets. You might not actually believe this, but we show up every day out of fear. You know, you get out of bed, shit's cracking, back hurts, joints are sore, roll over and everything hurts for no damn reason. Showing up is something that we're truly blessed with. Some of us don't even have the ability to even show up. We have good days and we have bad days. Instead of looking at it as something that you have to do, look at it as something that you get to do. And given the choice, I'm gonna show up every day. Now, one really cool note is going to be the minimum focusing distance on this lens. Now, it's not necessarily a macro lens, but only having about 19 centimeters as your minimum focusing distance, it's actually kind of nice. It's only about five inches apart, which is like, like kind of like that, which is really close. And then when you're on the long end at 50 millimeter, you have about a foot in terms of your minimum focusing distance, which at shooting 50 millimeters, I think is just fine for an all around zoom lens, especially if you're shooting things like portraits and you don't necessarily need to get a macro shot of jewelry or anything per se. Okay, so because this is going to be an autofocusing lens, we're gonna talk about the autofocus. Now, I use eye tracking on human subjects, but honestly, there's nothing to write home about these lenses in terms of autofocus, mostly because they're really good. The A7C Mark II also has an AI autofocusing feature inside of it, and this lens was recommended to be paired with the A7C II. It's a no-brainer that in the autofocus department, this is a match made in heaven. And also, you don't spend thousands of dollars to get great autofocus out of a lens like this. Now, considering the price point, the sharpness, performance, the color, the fact that it actually works with all of the Sony features in camera, there's one gripe that I don't like about the 24 to 50 millimeter lens. 
and, and it's this. Now, this is at 50 millimeters right now, but when I wanna zoom this guy out, or in, out, in, out, this is what it looks like. I don't like the fact that the barrel extends to zoom out and then comes back in when I wanna to go to 50 millimeters. Now, this might be a minor gripe for some people, especially because this is a compact lens, but it's just one thing, especially having the 16 to 35 power zoom, which I wish they had that power zoom feature in here as well. Now, understandably, when you're working with an f2.8 aperture, I'm sure they would have to make the lens a lot bigger to have that power zoom feature, but I kind of just wish they didn't have that. Now, that's pretty much the only thing that I don't think I'm super crazy about with this lens. I also guess the other thing is that when having a smaller focal range, you could have had something like an f2 24 to 50 millimeter, but at the same time, the same thing with the power zoom, it might have been a bigger lens. And I feel like they kind of designed this guy to be smaller and more compact, but still have a powerful zoom range and a pretty decent aperture that you would expect from other zoom lenses and something that's a lot more expensive. Now, speaking of expensive, this lens is like half as much as the 24 to 70 G Master lens. And when working with cameras that can go into super 35 mode, you're gonna get a lot of those same functionalities. Or even if you're just shooting at 4K, you might just be able to punch in in post and you'll still be able to get decent compression. It might just not look exactly like a 24 to 70. Photography features, as the kids would say, this clears. The 24 to 50 actually has great image quality, has great color, which you would expect from Sony G and G Master lenses. Now, keeping in consideration all the other things we've been talking about the lenses for video the same is going to be true for photography it's still going to have great autofocus you're still going to have a fast lens and at f2.8 for the majority of things you're going to be shooting in terms of a zoom lens this does cover the range in which a lot of people look for and need if it's something where you only have one lens and only have one option this actually might be a great starting point especially considering its price now wrapping that all up into a bow who do i think this is for i, I kind of think these lenses are for people that want to get a 20 24 to 70, but they look at the price tag of the G Master and they immediately want to throw up. It's also for some people that might not use 50 millimeters to 70 millimeters. Now, if I'm somebody that wants to shoot a lot of environmental portraits or street photography or just regular portrait sessions at a 50 millimeter, that covers a lot of the ranges that I would normally use on a regular basis. In the beginning of my career, I didn't really have anything longer than 55 millimeters on that little 1.8 Zeiss lens to begin with. So as long as I'm able to deal with the 2.8 aperture that comes with this lens, it doesn't really feel like it's a gigantic deal. Another person who this might be for, especially for some filmmakers, is generally speaking, I find that I kind of want to keep like five lenses at different focal lengths available at my disposal because that's mostly what I'll end up shooting in one of those ranges. And the fact that you have something that covers a 24, a 35, and a 50, out of those five lenses, I've covered three of them, which means that I might only need to get something like a super wide prime lens and maybe something a little bit more on the telephoto side, and I don't necessarily have to worry about more glass in my kit. It actually bridges the gap between a lot of lens coverage that you might be looking for, and it doesn't necessarily cost as much as buying three lenses in the first place. That being said, that's pretty much it for the 24 to 50 f2.8. I'm actually low-key a little bit upset about this lens coming out because I picked up the 16 to 35 f4 just a couple of days ago. But if you do want to check it out, you could obviously click the link in the description down below. Go and see everybody else's videos and make sure that you gather as much information as you possibly can before making a purchase decision. That's kind of what these embargo videos are for, which is just to tell you that this is a thing that exists and based on some of the use cases that I might have or other creators, might be something that you might like as well. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.